Hi, welcome to this episode all about how the brain makes change. And if you come in across the lightning process, you're probably really interested about that because the lightning process looks at how do people change their physiology? How do they affect processes going on within their body? Because most people come to the lightning process full of health issues. How can you change that? How does the brain influence that? How can you influence the brain to change that? All those are central questions about the lightning process. So let's look at it. First thing is, a really important topic is neuroplasticity. This is a concept in science about how the brain actually changes. So we used to think the brain was a little bit like a circuit board in a computer or a TV or a radio, where the wires are kind of burnt into the structure of the machine and it can't be changed. But now we realize that's not the case. The, the brain is not like that. It's constantly changing. And the reason it changes is it's it's working out which pathways are being used the most. And this is called neuroplasticity. Neuro meaning something to the nervous system, plasticity meaning it can be changed. So like plastic, plasticity, it's been molded. So neuroplasticity means the brain is constantly being aware of what pathways are being used the most. And the ones that are being used the most, it creates them to be faster, more effective. So the signal are processed much more quickly and therefore has much more influence. So any pathway you use a lot becomes favored, becomes better at doing what it does. And this is actually how we learn. So when we learn the piano or driving or reading or writing, neuroplasticity is occurring, where the brain is changing the nervous pathways as a result of using it. Now, how does this then affect health? Well, let's imagine we've got a problem with our gut. Our gut is just not digesting properly, it's hypersensitive. What it means is there'll be a lot of traffic from your gut to your brain, giving lots of information. And the brain will also be sending signals down to the gut to tell it what to do. Now, the amount of this traffic this uses, this extra usage, increases neuroplastic effects, which means the brain will start to make these processes faster. The signals will travel more effectively up and down and will become even more hypersensitive. So we can see there's a problem with neuroplasticity. Although it's about learning, depending on usage, it just learns whatever's happening. It doesn't really have a filter as, this, as to whether this is a good or bad learning. The great news about neuroplasticity is neuroplasticity is always happening, it's always on, it's always available throughout your whole life. So if you can find a way to send different signals down to your gut to say, let's calm down, or let's say you change your diet and your, your gut becomes calmer, the signals going up to your brain will also settle. But we really need to address both these things. We need to make sure that your digestion, your food is good, that you're eating properly, the, the things that are gonna be good for you but also making sure that the brain is helping to settle, relax, restore, and nurture the gut. Because if we don't have both those things, if all we do, and many of you have found this, you, you, you know, a lot of people have gut problems, and they have an amazing diet, often a very restrictive diet, but a healthy, clean diet, but it doesn't really make the change you want. And one of the reasons is there's this other part of the neurology that's been set in place as a result of all the problems in the gut, in this example, is still there, and that needs to change. So then the question is, how do we change it? Well, it's really a question of consciously choosing the new pathways. So how do we tell our gut to settle down? Well, interestingly, when we get into stress arousal, that shifts our gut into being more irritable. When we get into calm states, and there's loads of research into this, the more calm you are, the more your tummy settles. Quite often people find when they meditate, their tummy gurgles. This is a sign of everything just kind of moving in a more relaxed way because the gut is a very active thing. It's got muscles that move the food around because it's all, uh, if you think about the, the length of our gut is very long, so it's all kind of uh, tangled up on itself. And so gravity doesn't actually move uh, the food through your gut. It's, it's the muscles that squeeze like, like this squeeze through the food through your system. So we talked about the example of, of the gut. It's, it's, a, it's a great example of how physical health can be affected by neurology, but it's really true of everything because every part of our body has innovation. Every part of our body has a nervous system. The nervous system is connected up to the brain and tells that part of the body what to do. And 
that part of the body tells the brain what it's up to. So the muscles in our shoulders, the muscles in our legs do the same. The blood vessels. So the blood vessels, that's what's what carries the oxygenated blood to every single cell in the body. That's affected by our nervous system. The hormones that are produced in our body are triggered by the nervous system. So the, the potential for trouble is huge throughout the body when the nervous system is not doing what it should be doing. And equally, the potential for change is extraordinary because of the way the nervous system connects and controls and informs and gets information from every single part of our body. So neuroplasticity is this ability to of our nervous system to change as a result of usage. And it can work both ways. It can be healthy for us, help if we're running health, healthy, good pathways, and it can be destructive if, if we've found ourselves getting into pathways that are not healthy or helpful for us. And the good news is we can change it by steering how we move our nervous system, where we're putting our attention or our focus. So the more we can learn which pathways we're triggering, very often unintentionally, it's just happening within our body, that aren't helpful or healthy for us, and how to shift, and this is one of the key skills of the lightning process, to be aware when you're triggering pathways, stimulating pathways that you don't want to, that aren't healthy, and to learn how to calmly and kindly get the pathways you do want working in the way that you want to. But how do you do that? Well, that takes a bit of time. That's one of the core things of the lightning process, both being aware of what pathways you're triggering. How do you get awareness of that? That takes a bit of time to learn. There are signs that will help you, which are covered in the lightning process. And then also, how do you then trigger the pathways you do want? How do you steer your, neuro, your neurology in the way you want to? And that takes a bit of time explaining how you do that. It, fundamentally, it's about really using your focus to get in touch with powerful, helpful, healthy states. So that's usually involves recalling times in great detail of being relaxed or being energized. And it takes a while to learn how to do that. That's why the learning process takes three half days. It's one of the core things that people learn. But as a takeaway from the moment, think about neuroplasticity. Think about how much neurology must be, if, if you're suffering with illness or you're dealing with some stuff, how much neurology must naturally be stimulated by this experience? And it's kind of certainly nothing to do with you. It's just occurring within your body. It's just the way the brain works. It's a function of neurology. And what it would be like if you could find a way to switch into a calmer, more healthy, more balanced way in the parts of your body that need to feel healthier and well. So there's some starting points on a bit more of an in-depth understanding of what, what do we mean by brain training? What do we mean by how the brain can affect the body? And what do we mean by how you can change your brain? So I hope you found that useful. Uh, if you've got any comments, send them as usual to phil at philparker.org and I'll see you on the next one.